we've been doing great by saying okay pa pressure is equal to tr gradient and right atrial pressure correct we've been mentioning it right throughout on echo reports but what if i tell you that's not a right practice really we were very enthusiastic by it calculating the uh, gradient across the tricuspid valve we and adding an ra pressure we can tell very easily pulmonary artery pressure but then suddenly the guidelines came in uh, 2016 and uh, they found out erroneous problems there and they said no it's not a good idea to actually give an assessment on an uh, pulmonary artery pressure and they were right why and they said categorically that if you are mentioning on your echo report that patient has mild hypertension moderate pulmonary artery hypertension and severe pulmonary hypertension or you are mentioning that the pa pressure is equal to gradient plus right atrial pressure you are likely to be wrong now that always happens you see when you have a startup you are always so enthusiastic that you found a gold mine and uh, you are so uh, uh, happy to do all those measurements and these initial uh, goes by reality check when you do apply those uh, parameters in daily practice and you find they are not as good and then you don't feel really good during the reality check but over period of time you overcome all those inequalities and do understand yes this has to be taken with a pinch of salt and uh, there are situations where you may not be very accurate that, that initial enthusiasm uh, came from a very uh, uh, important uh, but study which showed that the PA pressure correlates wonderfully well with the pressure calculated by this uh, formula on an echocardiogram but the problem was is a very sh small studies uh, moreover the studies included more than 80 percent patients which had normal pulmonary artery pressure okay so they did not have patients with a high pulmonary artery pressure where you know this equation actually does not hold very very true and then we quickly started realizing there had been issues and problem with both ra pressure and pulmonary artery pressure uh, calculation by tr we had initial publication in 2009 which uh, stated that uh, we are inaccurate in about 50 percent of the patients uh, where we calculate pulmonary artery pressure and if you correlate that with the cath pressure that is the difference that's a huge 50 percent times we are wrong and that's why the guidelines were not wrong in saying that we shouldn't be doing it because we are wrong in 50 percent times again the studies say the same thing about 40 percent odd either under or overestimation of uh, pulmonary artery pressure and you are wrong in about uh, 40 percent to 50 percent patients of uh, uh, when you calculate the pulmonary artery pressure so that's bad so this is the scatter look at the scatter you know what it tells you here this is 50 percent 50 that means the the pressure of uh, pulmonary artery on catheterization and pressure calculated on an echo and it varied more than 50 millimeters of mercury right in so many number of patients the difference between the cath and echo is 50 millimeter of mercury huge right so a one time you are saying pa pressure of 30 but it's actually 80 well, that doesn't make any sense so that's why uh, it's not a good idea to do it and now let's try to figure out where we had a problem but i think it's a good idea to subscribe the channel and this all always gives us a thumbs up that yes you are doing well uh, on this youtube channel and the thing which we said was the uh, RA pressure was based on IVC collapsibility and IVC diameter and you guys uh, know about uh, this already but when we compared it with catheterization we had a very different experience look at few patients where we said the RA pressure uh, was 10 but RA pressure was less than 3 and when we said RA pressure was 10, there are few patients with RA pressure was more than 15. The things went bad when the RA pressure calculated on our system was 15 and it could be less than 5 to more than 20.
okay so there was a problem of calculation of an ra pressure so that was error number one and we have second component of our equation that is a tr velocity or a pressure gradient yes again i i suggest you to please subscribe the channel and we calculated tr velocities based on what the gradient was based on bernoulli equation actual bernoulli equation is uh, includes lot of uh, issues the flow acceleration the kinetic energy the viscous energy which we actually said okay these are not important in normal situations and we modified the bernoulli equation to say that p is equal to 4v square and that's what we use and uh, we must i must remind you the bernoulli equation is not this bernoulli equation is this so we have made assumptions that rest of things are not important so now when we are calculating tricuspid regurgitation you know the viscous forces we have already kind of discounted and uh, the bernoulli equation is okay in case you have a high velocity jet where the kinetic energy is quickly uh, converted into the uh, uh, potential energy by now the potential energy or the pressure is converted into kinetic energy because of the high uh, flow or turbulence but that doesn't happen in severe tr because you don't have too much of turbulence and high velocity and that is where the bernoulli equation is not very accurate now let's compare our uh, uh, gradient uh, or uh, what we said between uh, the rv and lv and how do we say the rv pressure and the difference between the gradient now the gradient between ra and rv whether you do it with the cath or you do it with the an echo and look at what uh, uh, is the difference there is a huge difference and that becomes more important in case the tr is severe look at the gradient difference what between uh, what we do it in a echo and when we do it with the with the cath so again reiterating the same thing in 2016 we have a 2025 guidelines on pa pressure and says exactly the same thing so now if i have to take a pa pressure what should i do should i write the gradient plus rap is equal to pa pressure no should i write mild pulmonary artery hypertension moderate pulmonary artery hypertension severe pulmonary hypertension in any patient no what should you do you take a tricuspid regurgitation if the velocity is nearly normal that is less than 2.8 and rarv is not dilated you say low probability of pah that's what the uh, the impression should go and in case it's present rarv are dilated and uh, tr velocity is low but then you are not very sure then you say it's intermediate probability because one uh, parameter is met that is dilatation and other parameter the tr velocity increase is not met so if the pa pressure is something uh, the tr velocity is uh, high and rarv uh, are not dilated again a disparity velocity is high rarv not dilated you still an intermediate the probability of ph in case you meet both increased ra velocity and rarv dilatation is present you say it's a high probability of so that's what and in case the pa uh, tr is more than 3.4 you say high do not calculate pa pressure you don't mention pa pressure you just say is it low probability of having ph moderate probability or intermediate probability of ph and high probability this is this is what best you can uh, uh, do and the second best thing you can do is that subscribe the channel